Welcome to this video where I am going to give you a short overview of what an integrated development environment looks like. Sometimes we call those IDEs for short. Um, and uh, we're going to start off though by looking at, well, what's the most basic way we could write some code for a program? So I've got a Python program open on my screen and I've got it open in a simple text editor. And as you can see, you can see my code. Um, I could edit the code, I could make some changes to it, I could add new functions, but it's not going to give me any kind of help or hints, it doesn't give me any highlighting, in fact it, it's trying to highlight some spelling mistakes because it thinks I'm just writing a normal text document. So though it would be functional and entirely possible to write a whole program using just a plain text editor, um, it doesn't give us any enhanced features that make writing software easier. A step up from this is what we call a code editor and a good example is this one called Sublime Text. So a code editor takes things a bit further than a standard text editor and it offers things like syntax highlighting. So different um, keywords will have different colouring to help the code stand out. You can also do other things like I can collapse functions and things like that um, and it will give me a certain amount of, of uh, code completion as well. So if I start writing some code, it will suggest what I should be writing. So I already it's suggesting I might want to write a def. And if I just press enter, it even gives me like a placeholder where I can put my function name. So I could call it say hello. And if I started writing P, it immediately gives me print, enter, brackets. If I put my quotes in, it closes my quotes off. Hi there, exclamation mark. And if I wanted to run that function later in my program, so let's go down here, and I called it say hello. If I just type typing S A it sees say hello, press enter, and I can put my parentheses on. So that's a code editor. It's obviously much, much better than just using a plain text editor. Um, and it, it will help me to avoid an awful lot of mistakes but it does have some limitations. One of those is that I can't run my program directly within this code editor. I'd still have to go to run this program, possibly in the terminal. So for example, I can save this, go to the terminal, and find where I've stored my file, and then I can run it in Python. Ah, and I have an indentation error uh, on line 55, which wasn't flagged up, by Sublime Text, it didn't tell me that. And the reason is I can just see I'm a space too far ahead. So I'd now have to save my file again, go back to the terminal, rerun my command, and now my program will run. So it's a big improvement, but there's still more we can do to make coding a little easier. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a full-blown IDE called PyCharm. Now, PyCharm is uh, an integrated development environment for writing Python programs, and you can actually get a free edition, and it's very good, I highly, highly recommend it. So let's have a quick look at some of the features it offers us that makes writing a program a little bit easier. So first of all, we've got the code editor, which is what we would expect. Um, so a bit like Sublime Text, it will color the different parts of my program, and if, let's delete our say hello and let's rewrite it, if we were going to go and write some programs, it will again give us some completion. So um, it does my auto indentation for me. So print, and it even gives me some little hints more than Sublime did. It actually tells me, oh, print is a function and it accepts these arguments. So it actually exposes lots of the language to you and, and, and teaches you about the language as you're coding. On top of that, it will actually give me some uh, warning signs. So it's got a little grey underline here, and it's telling me that there should be, if I just hover my mouse, there should be two blank lines between each function. And that's just good form. And again, I wouldn't necessarily have known that if I didn't use PyCharm to, uh, to guide my coding. Another thing offered by PyCharm is um, error diagnostics. So if I, let's say I get rid of the I in print, it's now giving me a red underline. So it's telling me that there's an error on this line. And it's saying it's an unresolved reference, P-R-N-T. And that's because there's no function in my program called P-R-N-T. So this is a syntax error. 
and it's you know, quite clear for me to see, ah, oh, I need to fix that. I know exactly where to look. Uh, and I just put my eye back to turn that back into print. Of course, if we're going to actually write a program, then we're going to want to run the program as well. And for that, we need what we call a runtime environment. And PyCharm gives me that. So down here, I can go to my run box. And if I just right click and choose to run Hangman, I can run my program right here. I haven't had to leave the IDE. I haven't had to go into the terminal to run my program. It hasn't opened any new windows up. I'm right here and I'm able to play my game. But one of the most important features of an IDE, and one of the reasons that programmers use them, is for something called a debugger. And a debugger is a tool that allows you to try and work out where the problems are in your program. We've already seen that PyCharm will highlight syntax errors, but that's relatively easy to fix. What's much harder to fix is a logic error, because if you recall, Logic errors don't stop your program from operating, they don't stop it running, but the wrong thing happens when they run. Similarly, a runtime error won't show itself until you actually run your program. So to fix those two types of uh, error, we need to use the debugger. So a debugger will allow us to step through the program bit by bit by bit. And we could do that from the very first line of execution, or we can do something if we know we're getting a problem at a certain point. So let's pretend I was having a little bit of an issue with my hangman game around here where correct letters, where we're testing if a letter is a correct letter in our words. If I wanted to pause my program here, I can add what's called a breakpoint. And it's signified in PyCharm with a bit of red highlighting. Now, a breakpoint is simply um, a, a line in your program where you are going to pause execution. You don't stop executing your program, you pause it so that you can check out the state of your program. So you can check out what are the values of all the different variables, what functions have I run by this point, and all those other things you might need to know. So I've put a breakpoint in, so let's now run a debugger on this. So I'm going to right click and go debug hangman. And it brings up my debugging console. Now here is the output, like normal, so this is where I can play the game. Here where it says variables, is where it's going to show me, when I hit my first uh, breakpoint, it's going to show me the state of all the different variables in my system. And frames shows me all the different functions that I've loaded up up to that point. So let's play the game. So I've got a, a, a word to guess. So I'm just going to always start, as I do, with an A. Let's press Enter, and it should pause execution when it gets to this point, when it checks if A is a correct letter. Okay, so it's done exactly that. I can see with the blue line that I am now up to this point in my program, and it's showing me that I am currently in my play hangman routine, which was called by the straight hangman program. And in fact, I can move between them, and if I go to hangman, I can see it's showing me some global variables. But I'll, I'll go back now to play hangman. And it's showing me the state of the different variables that are inside this particular function. So look, we've got a variable called guess word. We've got um, incorrect guesses, letters guessed, that's a list, correct letters, that's a list. These are all variables inside this function and they're all represented in this variables list. Notice very helpfully for um, something like hangman, it's actually telling me what the guessed word is that's been loaded. So I'll actually be able to check my program works when I put the right letters in. Um, it's showing that guess is A. Well, that's what I typed in. Guess is input, enter a letter to guess, and I put an A in, so it's saying guess is A. It's saying that currently, correct letters is an empty list, and letters guessed has an A in it. So um, that's been added to the letters guessed list there. So at this stage, I might want to then step onto the next line of code and see what happens next. So I can just step over into the next bit of code and that's jumped down to the else block. And the reason it's done that is because I guessed the letter A, but there is no A in the word recover. Fair enough. So let's push on, and it should loop back to, in my while loop to the same point again. So it's gone to my while loop, and I can keep going on. So I'm going to keep going and go through all these stages. Notice how my screen is building up as I'm showing the different parts. And now I get to guess another letter. So the, the, the word was recover, so let's put an R in and see what happens. Press enter. This time, guess is R, and it's 
highlighted in blue to show me that the value of guess has changed since the last time I looked at it. And um, that's been not yet added to my list of uh, letters. And actually, I've only had one incorrect guess so far. So let's step on. OK, now um, it's going to append the letter that I just guessed, R. So it's going to add that into my letters guess list if I go to the next line. So now I've got letters guessed A and R. And if I go on to my next line, it's going to add, if I do that one more time, it'll add R to my correct letters list. So what you can see here, hopefully, is that by using a debugger, we're able to go really line by line by line to find out exactly what's happening in our program. And it allows us to see exactly what's happening with each line of code. And we can see the effect of each individual line. The final thing I want to draw your attention to is not so obvious in PyCharm, but it's got a translator or the access to the translator built in. Um, and in the case of PyCharm, it writes Python programs and the translator is Python, which is installed on the computer. So the Python interpreter automatically takes your Python code and runs it and we get to see the output in the little run box here. If this was a different type of IDE, perhaps if we were using a C IDE or Java, then we might also have a compiler so that as soon as we pressed compile, there might be a build button it might actually turn our source code into machine code and compile it for us, again, without us having to go into the terminal and type lots of commands, which is what you'd normally have to do. It manages all of that and automates the whole process, which makes it so much quicker to build new versions of your programs for testing. So that's a little bit of an overview of the difference between an IDE and a code editor and a standard text editor. Hopefully, you'll be able to see some of the... Um, advantages that an IDE gives us and why a programmer would want to make the extra effort to learn how to use an IDE for all of the benefits that it can bring them.